we had just finished color correcting and dodging and changing the lighting and burning our creature after having posed it a little bit. And it's interesting, I'm saving it as a new file because it's interesting to see how your assignment two changes when you have to make it fit an environment. So that was it before, using a lot of the default lighting from the reference I found, even though I changed them all to match. And then this is what it is right now, right? And it's subtle, but there's just a little bit more believability to the overall color, the overall pose. Sometimes thinking of it as being in an environment helps you to see what your creature design needs. And that's sometimes where professionals who only do character and creature design kind of trip up a little bit because they're always going for, for kind of maximum shape impact and not always making things that really fit environments the best way. So this is where we start having to be a little bit extra thoughtful in our Proving Ground project. Now, if the lighting is as it is for the character, we have to think about what that does to the environment. So I'm gonna show you how we can put a shadow underneath our creature, right? A cast shadow, or maybe behind our creature, depending on what where your light sources are. And we're going to do this in a new way, which is a non-destructive overlay layer. So instead of treating our landscape like we treated our creature and just using dodge and burn right on the layers and changing those pixels, instead, I'm going to make a layer directly underneath my creature. So I'm going to say new layer. I'm going to mark it red so you can see it clearly, and I'm going to label it overlay layer. Now I'm calling it an overlay layer because it is going to only show us things that are darker and lighter than middle gray. We are going to fill it, first of all, we go to edit fill with middle gray. So 50% gray at 100%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to burn and dodge right onto it. So it's underneath my character and it's underneath any layers that my character is behind. So I just have these elements on top of it. And I'm going to use my burn tool. I'm going to affect the midtones, which is really all there is because we're just affecting middle gray. I'm going to make it big and soft. And this can be helpful to use a tablet for. I'm just using my trackpad. But I'll go ahead and plug my tablet in just so I can have a little pressure sensitivity for the size of the brush. So I can shape my... Uh... And there's lots of different ways to do cast shadows, but this is just a really, really direct, simple way. So wherever the, the feet are touching, I'm gonna hit first. And wherever there's touching, that's going to be where the shadow is darkest. And then based on the direction of the light, the shadow pulls out to extend that direction. So where the foot is off of the ground, that shadow is not going to be as strong underneath that foot. All right, so here you can see how I'm doing that shadow right on the gray layer. But the reason we call it an overlay layer is if I change the, the blending mode of the layer from normal to overlay mode, that the only thing it will show is the shadow underneath my creature. So whatever we do to that overlay layer will affect all the layers underneath it as long as what we do to it is lighter than 50% or darker than 50% gray. So you can see how that does a really nice job and I can still do it here, making a cast shadow for us. So this environment has pretty extreme temperatures. If it has misty snowy mountains and then green 
like vibrant brush. So it would make sense that this creature would be breathing. It looks like a warm blooded creature. It has the, the ears to help regulate its temperature and to hear prey, but it looks like it might be breathing in like a cold environment a little bit, right? So this is something else we can do with the overlay layer. If I change it back to normal, just so you can see, I can actually make breath. So I'm gonna go, instead of burning, I'm gonna dodge. I'm gonna dodge the midtones, big and soft. And I'm gonna start right in the mouth. And I'm gonna make, it's a little cartoony, but a little cloud of breath. Very soft edged, 0% hardness. Because you don't want it to look like graffiti on your background. Now this will not go in front of my character. This will just be behind my character. And then that, that breath might swirl around its head a little bit, right? And just slightly lighten the environment. So if I go to overlay again, let's see what it does around his head. And then I can judge whether that's helpful or not. And it's helpful in a few ways. It actually makes his, hand, his head stand out a little bit better. But it also, I can rationalize, is a little bit about the breath, right? I can also use it to brighten up parts of the landscape behind my creature that I want. Like this tree is pretty dark, so maybe I use that overlay layer not to change the tree, but to change how the tree looks. So this is what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. It's great for photo editing and for fine tuning. All right. What if I want not just to, to worry about the overlay layer and the things behind my creature. I put on normal mode so you can see. But what if I really want to address the, the things around my creature's feet, right? So I can see I have a little bit of a halo around my creature that I probably want to cut back on. Good. Kind of shape his nails a little bit, give him a bit of a pedicure. But what if I want to composite in some grass or some of the dirt, some of the textures of the ground around his feet? So how can I do that? Well, I can do some internal compositing. So for instance, I can take some of this texture here, grab it, duplicate it from that layer, move it on top of my creature's feet, Turn this back to overlay mode. And now I have an element that I can play with. That I can stretch. That I can use to, to help it kind of settle, its feet to settle into the ground instead of just be completely on top of it. Then I can use my soft eraser. I have a 60% a opacity. It 
This is called internal compositing because we're stealing from elements we already have in the image and using them as a duplicate somewhere else in the image. And just by erasing subtly, that does a lot to, uh, to help it sink in. But of course, I can play with my color balance. I think that's all it's going to need. Push it into the blues a little bit more. So that can help sink in my creature. If I turn the overlay layer on to normal, you'll see again what that's doing. So adding little components like that. Of course, I have a big component, which is the grass that I had turned off right here. And the problem with the grass is when you see it with the overlay layer made opaque, it's got all kinds of debris still that I need to erase Oops, and take care of. So let me make sure I'm on the right layer. So the overlay layer mask can also help you see where you can make corrections. Now, if I cut out this grass well enough, I can also puppet warp it. Just like it were, as if it were a creature. And I remember I was pretty rushed with assignment one, getting into the foreground. So I didn't cut out all of these elements as nicely as I, I probably should have. But I especially want where they're overlapping my creature for them to be more believable. Because when we look at something that's a figurative element, something we expect to move and change, especially something that we tell a story through, like a character, it's a lot less forgiving than just environmental elements in a visual. So it gives us the opportunity to really clean this up. without trying to be perfectionist about it. So I might just use my eraser a little bit too. And soft edges are always a good way to approach this. Ah, but look how nice that is. Even with the grass, that little addition still helps to sell it. I'm just going to move that underneath the grass. So it's just right there. And then I might move it a little bit more. Like every little bit helps. And then I might duplicate it again and use it over here as well to kind of transition some of these rough spots with the grass layer. So all our compositing tricks can be used here. And we can feel safe dodging and burning over the entirety of our landscape using that overlay layer anything that's behind our creature. We could even create a new overlay layer for what's in front of our creature, if we want to. Okay, so let's see what happens if I puppet warp if I puppet warp the, um, the grass. So I'm going to save it first because I'm not sure what's going to happen. But I don't like how the grass is jabbing right into his mouth. That's just a little annoying to my overall design aesthetic. So if I take that layer and I say edit puppet.